Hey everybody. So today we're going to talk about a question that I have been asked by multiple people over the past couple of weeks. And the same question has been asked. I've noticed the same kind of question, not the, not verbatim the same, but the same kind of question being asked in the subreddit along with other subreddits. So I figured it was a good time to make a video about it. Also, because I'm going to talk about my course, I have the details. I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But the question that I have been asked a whole bunch recently is, what are the most important things to look at when you are reading a natal chart? And that's a, <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> it really is. And it's, it's, it's really a hard question to answer because each chart is unique and it, it can just be a very hard question to answer. But I am going to go into that a little bit along with just reading in general. And I feel like this is a good thing to talk about in this particular video where I am going to also be talking about my course, The Fundamentals of Chart Weaving. For the past few uh, few months, maybe month and a half, I have mentioned that The Fundamentals of Chart Weaving 2024 will be starting up, but I didn't know when. I know when now. <laughs> I know when it'll be starting. I know how long it'll be. I know the course. Okay, so this year, the course is 16 weeks but I'm doing it a little differently than I've done it in years past. This year, <clears throat> I'm going to be offering two classes during the week. They will take place on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central Time and Saturdays at 2 p.m. Central Time. You do not have to show up to both classes because the same material will be taught on the Thursday class and on the Saturday class. But for people being able to, for the, for the class, for the classes to be accessible to more people without, you know, just one, one time, one day, one time. And because I love to teach, <laughs> like I love to teach. Um, I figured that I would offer them the same class two days a week. So of course is 16 weeks in total. The Thursday classes start on Thursday, May 16th at 6 PM central time. These, the Thursday classes will run through Thursday, September 5th. The Saturday classes will start on Saturday, May 18th at 2 p.m. Central Time, and they will run through Saturday, September 7th at 2 p.m. Central Time. I'm looking at my notes to make sure I'm not saying the dates wrong. <laughs> so the course will either start on May 16th if you want the Thursday classes, or May 18th if you want the Saturday classes. <clears throat> Again, you do not have to come to both classes during the week. You only have to show up to one. And when I say have to show up to one, you don't even have to show up to one. I have, I've had people in 2022 and 2023 that did like distance learning sort of things where they couldn't make it to any of the classes. They were maybe shy and didn't wanna be in a group class, but they wanted to learn the material. I'm absolutely fine with that too. You don't actually have to show up to anything. Um, <laughs> we all have lives. I get that too. But you only, if you, if you want to show up to the live classes, you only have to show up to one of them per week, though. You're more than welcome to show up to both. If you would like to show up to both, uh, to immerse yourself in more learning, to get a better handle on whatever the subject is that particular week, by all means, you're more than welcome to, uh, to show up to both. <clears throat> These classes take place over Zoom. The Zoom link for each class will be emailed the day of. You will get notes for each class before each class. You will get homework. I do give homework. You do not have to do it. Again, you're not obligated to do it, but if you're going to learn from me, I wanna give you every opportunity possible to learn, right? I want you to learn it. If you want to learn it, <laughs> I want you to be able to. So homework will be given. All recordings of the classes will be emailed out after class. So you'll have those two to review if you'd like to. The course is 650 in total. On my website right now, and I'll put the link in the description box below, so you can go check it out if you want to, if you're interested in learning more about it or just wanna buy it outright or whatever. The course is 650 in total. <clears throat> um, you can pay for it in full on my website. I also have another way to pay, which is breaking 650 into four payments. So each of the four payments would be $162.50. If you want to go this route, I just need the $162.50 before the, before the class starts, before the course starts, before the first class. If you need some other kind of payment arrangement, and I've certainly had that come up in the past, and I am more than willing to work with people, try to come to some sort of arrangement 
that works for both of us, shoot me an email at ellie at saturnseason.com or saturnseason at gmail.com. I really am happy to work with you. I don't want cost to be a barrier to people learning, wanting to learn, people that want to learn it. Learn this astro language. <laughs> I do not want this to be a barrier to learning the cost of it. So we can, we can more than likely work something out. Just as a disclaimer, because somebody kind of, I don't know, <laughs> got nasty or not, they really weren't nasty, they were just kind of rude, about, <laughs> about me using the term astro sluts. I mean that in a absolutely loving and playful way. I am certainly not, <laughs> there's certainly nothing derogatory meant by that when I use that word. But I do want to throw out there that I do swear. I do. Anybody that's been here a while knows that. I do swear. <laughs> I will swear when I teach, not at a student, but I do swear and I, and I'm not, and I don't care if you do either. <laughs> like I want this to be as natural and organic and, and everybody being themselves as possible. Um, so if, if, if that's not how you, if you don't want to learn from somebody who does that by all means, I'm probably not the teacher for you, <laughs> but, um, yeah, otherwise. I, I think I'm pretty good at teaching. I really, really love it. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Like thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. It lights me up. So if you have any questions about anything, again, you can go to the link in the description box below. Check out what is being offered, what, what it looks like. The syllabus is also there. So you can check out, you know, what, what, what will be covered in this course are the, um, you know, everything. The houses, the signs, the planets, um, the four incarnates. Blah, 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 Four incarnations of Lilith. <laughs> um, a little bit on the north and south nodes, though that has a course all on its own. That's usually done in the fall. But a little light introduction on that. Chiron gets a class. Um, we'll be talking about out of bounds planets, the sun moon midpoint, um, planetary dispositors, um, dispositions by house cusp, which I think is super important, um, aspect patterns, major and minor aspects. <laughs> Um, there is a whole class on the Galactic Center and the Galactic Grand Cross. Um, there is a class on retrograde planets. Most classes will be an hour. So if you do the Thursday class, you'll be 6 to 7 Central Time. If you do the Saturday class, you'll be 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Central Time. Just adjust to wherever you are in the world. There are a couple classes that I know will run over an hour, and that's the class on retrograde planets and the class on the Galactic Center of the Galactic Grand Cross. Those two classes do, do go over an hour. I, I know that. I don't know exactly how long, but I know they'll be over an hour. <clears throat> oh, and chart synthesis, the most important part, you know, of, of the whole thing, because I do take a holistic approach when I read a chart. I break it all down and then I weave it back together. And that's why it's called chart weaving. That is what I mean by chart weaving. Because I do, you know, you got to take a holistic approach to this kind of thing. I, I, that is, that is how I taught myself. <laughs> that is what I do in practice. Um, and it works. So yeah, shoot me an email, ellie at saturnseason.com or saturnseason at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments, anything, you can leave a comment below in this video, however you want to, whatever you want to do. I'm trying to think if I left anything out about this. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Okay. So I felt like that was a good thing to include in this particular video because of the question that, that I, that I've been asked by multiple people recently, which is what, what do I think are the, you know, most important things to look at when, when reading a chart? And, you know, again, that is such a hard question to answer. I, I think a better way for me to maybe phrase this is what things in a chart am I the most drawn to look at first? Both my, my eyes are drawn there. My, um, my mind is drawn there. What are the most important things to look at when I, when I look at a chart, the things I look at first. Now, again, it depends on, you know, I will say this also, it depends on, <clears throat> you know, what somebody's coming to you for or wanting to know, or what you yourself are wanting to know, right? If you're wanting to focus on, say, money, financial stuff in the natal chart, then my, then my eye immediately, because there's a focus there, is going to look at, you know, the second house. 
Second house is, is resources, money, values, personal resources, money, values, that, that kind of thing. Um, might look at the eighth house, other people's money, <laughs> shared money, shared resources, shared resources, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, the rulers, the planetary rulers of each of the second and the eighth houses. Um, I might look at Venus, you know, Venus deals with money, um, and, and valuable things. Mercury also can deal with like the exchange of currency. <clears throat> so in that situation, I'm looking at those specific things, right? But if it's just somebody coming to me and being like, I just tell me about myself, blah, 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 blah. What do you, what, what stands out most to you? These are the things that tend to get my attention first. Okay, so the big one, or some of the biggest ones, chart ruler, the chart ruler or the planetary ruler of the ascendant. This is my personal, I, these are my personal opinions. Like my personal opinion is the, the chart ruler is more important than the ascendant. <laughs> this is my opinion. I know there are people that would disagree with me and that's fine, but I do think the chart ruler is more important because the chart ruler is the person by way of first disposition. You know, the ascendant is many things, but it's, you know, you know, with the way the person approaches the world in a knee jerk way, um, instinctually, that, that kind of thing. And, and how, even how the world can respond to the person. But the chart ruler tends to add another layer of depth to that. <clears throat> so like, I don't know, I, I've had people before, I'm going to use a, a client that I've had in the past she was a, she was a Leo ascendant. And I remember when she came to me, she was like, I don't feel like a Leo ascendant. You know, you hear about Leo ascendants, you hear that they're supposed to be like warm and bright. And, and actually I thought she was very warm, but that was, <laughs> but she did, you know, I thought she was, but you know, she was like, they're supposed to be warm and bold and like shiny. And you know, when I think of Leo energy, I think, of, you know, like theatrical and, and dramatic and animated. And she was like, I'm not any of those things. And I'm like, or, or I don't feel like any of those things. And I'm like, okay, okay, well, let's, you know, that happens, you know, she hired me and I'm like, well, let me see your, give me your details and I'll start looking at it. Well, she was a Leo ascendant, but she had the sun, which was her chart ruler in the fourth house in Scorpio, which changes things dramatically. <laughs> you know, that, that, that fourth house is much more private. It's personal. Um, so while I, you know, she was doing some, you know, she, I, you know, I thought she was warm, right? I thought she was, but she may not have felt that way in most contexts, right? However, we were doing something that was personal to her, right? That, that chart ruler in the fourth house, fourth house being very personal, private. So this came out to play in this context, right? In the context of what I was doing for her. But it made sense to me why she maybe didn't align with that Leo rising, that Leo ascendant, um, the, the typical way that you would think of a Leo ascendant. So the chart ruler, what the chart ruler is doing in the chart by sign, house, aspects made, all that stuff is incredibly important. <laughs> it's incredibly important and can help make sense of so much. <clears throat> so chart ruler, definitely something that I will look at for sure. Definitely my eye will be drawn there. Um, and most of the time it comes up <laughs> in a Zoom reading or in a recording that I record and then send to somebody. It will always come up in a report. In like my biography, natal chart reading reports that are like 30, 40 pages, it'll always come up. It will always get mentioned. <laughs> um, because I do, I do feel like it is very important. Another thing that I think is very important when reading a chart is looking at the South Node and the planetary ruler of the South Node. And the reason for that is, I, and I'm not going to get, you know, the South Node is something that you can also look at for past lives or a past lifetime. But if you're not comfortable with that, not everybody is, and that's fine. Just think about the South Node and the planetary ruler of the South Node as being where, the, where you or the person that's chart you're looking at comes into this lifetime most comfortable and familiar. Now that doesn't mean that you like it. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you like it. That doesn't really mean that it's that 
comfortable at all. It may not be, but it's familiar. And sometimes even if things, we don't like things, if they are familiar, they are comfortable. And that's kind of what you can see going on with the South Node. So I, I do like to look at the South Node by Sign House Aspects Made and the Planetary Ruler of the South Node by Sign House Aspects Made to kind of get an idea of what this person is comfortable and familiar, comfortable and familiar coming into this incarnation or in this lifetime if you're not comfortable with past incarnations or future incarnations. But it, but it does tend to give you a good idea of that person's like baseline. It, it really does. The South Node, Planetary Ruler of the South Node, and the Chart Ruler really do give, I, I feel like those, those things can really give you a good idea of the baseline of the person. <clears throat> Oftentimes. Now, there are things that can kind of change that. I look at the North Node too, right? I definitely look at the North Node too. But um, I do think the South Node can actually give one a better understanding of themselves. And then the North Node is what you want to grow into, evolve into, move towards in this lifetime, but it's not always as familiar or comfortable. So, yeah, but I mean, there are things that can, that can change this a little bit, but generally speaking, planetary ruler of the South Node, South Node, even Pluto, Pluto and the planetary ruler of Pluto, because Pluto can be read in, the, in a similar kind of way alongside the South Node same kind of way. So you can kind of think of Pluto as like another place to find that familiar or comfortable <laughs> kind of thing. And the planetary ruler of Pluto. All of this, I, I, I like to look at all of these things um, when I'm looking at a chart. These are kind of where my eyes are drawn first. My eyes are also just drawn to Pluto because of what Pluto is. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that, you know, just because of what it is outside of the being like the South Node functioning kind of like the South Node, you know, it's an I think it's also an important thing to look at in the chart for, you know, evolution, for uh, transformation, metamorphosis, intensity, depth, psychological stuff, all of that. Um, retrograde planets, those are another thing that my eye will always be drawn to. Um, if I notice that somebody has a lot of retrograde planets, they seem like a retrograde heavy person. And to me, a retrograde heavy person is somebody who, one, has their chart ruler retrograde. This will always stand out because if the chart ruler is retrograde, it kind of retrogrades the whole chart in a way. <laughs> now that sounds confusing because it doesn't like turn every single planet retrograde or anything like that, but it gives that chart a retrograde flavor when that chart ruler is retrograde. And when I see that, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, okay. So by first disposition, this person's a little different, a little different. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> the world needs different. The world needs things that, that, you know, go outside the status quo and all that. It, the world needs this. So I think of a retrograde heavy person as somebody that's got a retrograde chart ruler or um, somebody who has like, I don't know, three or four planets retrograde in their chart. That's kind of when, when I think of retrograde heavy, that's kind of, that's kind of what I think of though. It, it does kind of depend on the, on the chart too, <laughs> to a certain extent, but um, retrograde planets, because any, any planets and the reason why is because any planets, not only are they going to function differently, but retrograde planets, I do feel like they are personal. They are more personalized. They are spiritualized. <clears throat> and this is because rather than the planetary energy going outward, out into the world, it is going in into the person. I, I don't really want to use the term extroverted and introverted because that's not right exactly. But in terms of like the energy going out into the world, right, it is sort of extroverted with direct planets versus introverting or going inward with retrograde planets. And it's really important for the person, depending on what planet we're talking about, to turn that planetary energy inward and figure out that planetary energy for themselves. So like in the case of Saturn, right? Saturn is <clears throat> mastery, authority, uh, maturity, responsibility, uh, all of these kinds of Saturnian things, among other things. 
when Saturn is retrograde, the person needs to turn that planetary energy inward, needs to think about it from their own point of view, from their own like, sorry, I think I have something in my eye, from their own like, what is mastery to them? What is authority to them? Not what they've been shown, not what they've been shown mastery is, or authority is, or responsibility is, or maturity. Not what they've been shown by the outside world, not what they've been shown through conditioning, not none of that. It's what they find within themselves that actually resonates and makes sense to to them and oftentimes it's not always what makes sense to the rest of the world <laughs> and that you know but life for people with retrograde planets is easier for them in the long run when they turn that planetary energy inwards whatever planet we're talking about i just use saturn as an example um, so I definitely look at those. I definitely take note of that. I'll also take note of signs intercepted in houses because any, any sign and also any sign that's intercepted is going to be intercepted on the opposite end of the chart as well. Like if you have Aries intercepted, say in the first house with Pisces on the cusp of the first house, then you're also going to have Libra intercepted in the seventh house <clears throat> on the other end of the chart. And when you've got, when you've got signs intercepted, what ends up happening is you can have a sign, sign energy will normally express itself through the areas of life of the house that it's in. And because you have a sign intercepted, that sign energy cannot as easily or cleanly express itself through that house. So if you've got Aries intercepted in the first house, you're looking at things like drive, um, instinct, impulse, action, anger, aggression, um, independence, all these, all these Aryan things, sexuality, even, uh, the raw kind of sexuality, <clears throat> all of these things are going to have a harder time coming through cleanly through the first house, through the house of self. Now, sometimes what happens is it can be kind of like locked away and can have a hard time expressing itself. Or when it does come out, it comes out in ways that are less controllable by the person or they have less control over how it comes out. It just might kind of pop off. And I use pop off because in the case of Aries, right? Aries energy can pop off. Mars, the ruler of Aries can pop off. So. I, that's why I use that, that language there. So with these, you know, I always, I always take note of that to see if there's anything like that going on, you know, signs intercepted, because that can show that there can be sort of a, some, there's something going on with that planetary, or not planetary, there's something going on with that sign energy and any planetary energy happening to fall intercepted. There's something going on with it. So I'll look, also like to look at where the planetary ruler of each sign intercepted falls as well, because that can be like a way to that working with that planet, like in the case of the Aries Libra being intercepted, you can look at Mars and Venus and see kind of what they're doing in the chart to give some ideas as to how to perhaps allow Aries energy to come through more cleanly or more controlled or whatever. And same thing with Libra energy in the seventh house in the case of Venus. Another thing I look at, and this is, I, I do look at the sun moon midpoint, the sun moon midpoint. I think it's important to look at. It may or may not come up, right? Um, depending on what kind of reading that you get, but I do always, will always calculate it. I think it's important. It can kind of, it can kind of show where like your, your identity, your ego and your emotions kind of come together. I think it's an important thing to look at. If that happens to be, be conjunct a planet, um, if, if the conversation goes that way over Zoom, I will definitely talk about it. In a report, I will bring it up because I think it's important. Another thing I look at, <laughs> if you've got planets conjunct the galactic center, the galactic anti-center, the super galactic center, the blank space space, the Shapley attractor, great attractor, dipole repeller, any of that, if you have, if you have planets going on, if you've got planets conjunct the galactics, I'm taking note of it. 
<laughs> do I actually bring it up? It really depends on, on, on what, um, what you're wanting me to read for. If there's time, um, if it, you know, it, but I'm always taking note of it. <laughs> I will always take note of it. And a lot of times it does come up because this is something that I, I do think is important. But I also realize that it's a little bit further out, a little bit more out there. Not everybody, not everybody takes this into consideration. And some people don't even know what, what the fuck it is I'm talking about if I bring it up. <laughs> so depending on if I feel like the person has like, kind of knows what I'm talking about, I, I, I very, I, I will probably bring it up because I think it's important. <laughs> I think these are important parts to, to take note of and to read. And that's why they get their own class. <laughs> Same thing with retrograde planets. That's why they get their own class. Cause I think these, these things, these particular things are very important. Intercepted signs are also, there's, there's also a class that deals with, with that in the course as well. Now, some other things that I wanted to mention about reading, because I feel like this is a good, a good video to do this in. Okay. Your chart is more than just one aspect or one placement or one aspect pattern. There are a lot of people that feel like their entire chart, their entire natal chart hinges on one, one aspect or one planet or one aspect pattern or one something. There are a lot of people that feel like their whole thing hinges on this one thing. You have to take the entire thing into consideration. I, I, I can't stress this enough. Now that's not to say that that planet, say, let's say, um, let's say it's a specific planet. We'll use Saturn again. Let's say it's Saturn in your chart. And you feel like Saturn is like just where it is. It's, 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 it's like, it's like what your chart hinges on. It probably doesn't. <laughs> no, I want, that's not to say that Saturn in this hypothetical imaginary example is not important. It probably is because it's Saturn. <laughs> it probably is. All the planets are important. But my, my point is your entire chart does not hinge on Saturn or let's say it's, let's say it's Saturn uh, square the moon and you're really, really hung up on that or somebody is really, really hung up on that particular aspect in the chart. I'm not saying it's not important. It probably is, but does your whole chart hinge on it? Probably not. <laughs> probably not. And if you are too focused on one particular planet or on one particular aspect or on one aspect pattern that you have going on in your chart, you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something else. And, and I've, I've, I've seen people do this and, and it's, it's very, very normal and very, very natural to do this, to become, and I'm also not saying, you know, there are certain aspects in a chart that are more important than others. There are certain planets that when I, when I look at a chart, I'm like, oh, you know what? that's really important here, whatever it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's Mars, maybe it's Uranus, whatever, you know, but that does happen. But like hardly ever does an entire chart hinge on one thing, seriously. So keep that in mind uh, when, when you're reading a chart, when you're looking at a chart, keep that in mind that very rarely does it all hinge on one thing and you really need to take everything into consideration when you are looking at the chart. Also taking into consideration, not only, you know, like another, another thing that I'll see people not take into consideration when they do this is like, let's say in the case of, of, of Saturn squaring the moon, they're not taking into account the houses that Saturn rules in the chart or the house that the moon rules in the chart this isn't coming in. They're leaving things out of the equation as they're, as they're hinging everything on this particular aspect or on this particular planet or whatever you, I, the whole thing matters. The whole thing matters. And the same thing could be said about like looking at synastry charts. It's not just one aspect in synastry that matters. Got to take the whole thing into consideration. Um, any kind of any kind of chart, you want to take the entire thing into consideration. 
And really what you wanna do is look for chart signatures. I think this is important because you'll see certain certain themes coming around again and again. And that, let's say it's Saturn square the moon, right? The In the example that I used before. That Saturn square the moon might play into that chart signature that you're seeing come around. But there's more going on in that chart signature than just Saturn squaring the moon. So you wanna also look for chart signatures. That's also something else that we do in chart weaving uh, throughout the course, definitely in the last two classes that are about synthesis. Um, hopefully there will be a live, a live subject <laughs> um, do because the past couple of years I've had a, had a, had a friend of mine at, at the time um, come in and be the live subject for, for the students. Hopefully that happens again, but the chart signatures and things like that will definitely be discussed in those two classes for sure. Um, another thing, another thing, and this is kind of, okay, by all means, and, and this isn't just, this isn't just at me, this towards me. I know that this happens. People will ask questions on YouTube about things in their chart. Totally normal, totally natural, absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I know that this doesn't just happen to me. I know that people, all kinds of people that do what I do get asked the same kind of thing, right? They get asked questions about a chart. What does this mean? What does this mean? Now, I can't speak for every astrologer, but I can speak for myself and I can speak for the ones that I know. We are very visual people. We have to see your chart. <laughs> we have to see it. <laughs> I mean, we could give you a very, very basic, this is what this means. I know when I, when I respond to questions like this, I will be like, take this with a grain of salt because I have not seen your chart, but it could mean this. I would have to see your chart to know more. I guess I just, I see people doing this. And again, there's nothing wrong with asking questions. I don't want to dissuade people from asking questions, um, on here or asking questions to other astrologers or whatever, but this is, I, I, I can speak for myself and the, and the astrologers that I know, we are very visual people. It is hard for us to answer questions and personalize them to you and your situation without having seen your chart or whatever chart it is you're talking about. If you're talking about a sinistry chart, whatever, persona chart, whatever kind of chart you're talking about, we, we are visual people, we do need to see it. So my advice with that is, um, beyond something, beyond getting something very basic from somebody on YouTube or whatever without having seen the chart. Um, beyond that, book a reading with somebody that you wanna book with. You can book with me or you can book with somebody else, but my point is <laughs> whoever you wanna go with, if you want like a personalized answer to you, you do need to either learn how to read yourself <laughs> or or book with, a, with an astrologer. Um, but yeah, those are just some just some things I wanted to um, wanted to mention in this video. This one got kind of long, but whatever. I'll have timestamps. <laughs> um, again, if you want, um, if you are interested in the course, interested in learning more about it, I will put the link in the description box below where you can find it on my website. The syllabus again, the syllabus is there. I'll probably actually link the syllabus on this video just to have it there. <clears throat> um, I will also put the link in the description box where you can find me if you do want a reading from me. Where you can where you can get a hold of that <laughs> um i'll also put my email both my emails so if you have any questions about anything pertaining to the course or whatever whatever um you can you can shoot an email my way and i will uh i will see you all later